Greetings from Lawrence, Kansas. This college football Saturday on FS1 opens up in the Big 12. It's a rivalry game. The Sunflower Showdown featuring Kansas and Kansas State. Welcome in, everybody, with Devin Gardner. I'm Adam Alexander. So good to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon. I know you love a little state championship game. I mean, I've been a part of a few. It's one of the best things about college football, rivalries. Let's start things off talking Kansas State. Many players to feature here. Likely, though, at the top of the list, they're running back Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, the sophomore. I mean, Coach Kleiman, when they started the season 3-0 and and then dropped three straight when league play started, he said he didn't sense any panic. It's because of players like this. He has some of the best stats in all the FBS, FBS history in his first two years as far as all-purpose yards go. I mean, he does it on every type of way. Catching, running, they're going to try and get it to him. Over 150 last year in the rivalry game for the sophomore Deuce Vaughn. He did it then as a freshman. Now we talk about Kansas. Here's a team that's 1-7 and seven on the year. They've lost 12 straight to their in-state rival. What do you see in the Jayhawks? I mean, they are a puzzling bunch, right? It's They start off the year, you know, not getting a chance to tackle as well as they want, finishing on third down. And then they're like, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where against Oklahoma a few weeks ago, they find a way to do all the things well that they want to do. They tackled, they converted on third downs, and then just one week later, an entirely different bunch. Who will we see today? The first meeting for Kansas and Kansas State, 1902. Who gets bragging rights today? The kickoff from Lawrence when we come back on FS1. Tonight's gonna be a good night. That's a nice gonna be a good, good night. It's football, and it's a rivalry game. You know there is a special trophy. In the Sunflower Showdown between Kansas and Kansas State, the Governor's Cup is always on the line for the 111th year consecutively we'll see who wins the sunflower showdown and these rivalry games what it's all about yeah i mean it's ex it's very fun it's exactly what college football is all about you throw the records out of the window you come into a stadium filled with people who hate or love you and you get down in the showdown First ever Sunflower Showdown for Coach Lance Leipold, who comes from Butler. So much success at the Division Three level with Wisconsin Whitewater. He's got his team at 1-7, but he really likes the opportunity to go out and try and win in November and go into the offseason on a high note. Chris Kleiman, in his third year leading the Wildcats, went to a bowl game in 2019, a win today and Kansas State will be bowl eligible. Gorgeous day here in Lawrence, Kansas. Right now, 53, going to a high of 65. This is what it's all about. The toss won by Kansas State. They defer, and they will kick off to begin the game. And it's going to be Ty Zittner to kick it away. Kenny Logan back deep for Kansas. Here we go in Lawrence. Touchback 25-yard line is where Kansas will start things off. And their quarterback, Jason Bean, a 6'3", 189-pound red shirt junior out of Texas. The North Texas transfer, so good, as you mentioned, a couple of weeks ago against Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean, he, but he struggled last week. He didn't come out to start the second half a week ago. And Coach Leipold said there was never a chance of us not playing him in this game, right? But we wanted to give him a chance to sit on the side and watch it happen because, you know, when you're a quarterback and that snowball starts to fall, it gets bigger and bigger. So they want to kind of protect him and give him a chance to come out this week fresh. What they did against Oklahoma, they got up early, playing with a lead, always an advantage, especially when you're an underdog. And the opening run goes to the freshman Devin Neal as we take a look at the starters offensively for the Jayhawks. Yeah, you got an offensive line who's played well, right? They haven't given up a bunch of sacks. They've been proved from a year ago. And then you got some talented skill guys, and it's led by Devin Neal, who you saw just carry the ball a second ago. He is a freshman, but he's really, really grown up, and the coaches love how mature he is, not only in the run game, but in the pass protection game as well. His coaching staff didn't get here until April. Didn't meet a guy like Neal, who's a true freshman, until summertime. So they have been learning on the fly, no doubt. A pass on second down is 
complete. And this is Trevor Wilson, the wide receiver, a transfer from Butler, out close to first down yardage. He'll set up third down and three as we look at the defensive lineup for the Wildcats. Yeah, I mean, it's led by Felix and UDK Uzama. He is about as talented as they come. Last week had himself quite the day, and that back end is strong as well. We're going to see a bunch of guys shuffling in and out in the back end, but these are the guys that will start. And UDK Uzama, leading sack man in the country. We'll see what he does here on third down and three. Keep an eye on number 91. Tied the school record with four sacks in a win last week against TCU. Bean out of the shotgun. Gives it to Neal. And the extra effort gets him close to the 35. And the mark is going to leave him a half a yard short. You know, Adam, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't go for it here. I mean, if I'm in this rivalry, it's a rivalry game. You, you you don't have great field position right now if you don't get it. But what do you have to lose if you're Coach Lipo? You want to see if your team is tough enough and deserve to be in this position. And it looks like he's going to give them that opportunity to either draw them off sides or pick up the first down with the run. Arnold lines up bottom of the screen. They go quick. And this is Neal hit at the line of scrimmage, and the spot will dictate whether he got it or not. Among those there to make the stop was Ross Elder from his safety position. And now we take a look, and I think he got enough. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he gives like an extra surge right there. A little burst and surge towards the yellow line, which is unofficial. But it looks like he did get enough yardage to get the first down. He did get the first down. Nice block by the tight end, Mason Fairchild, who came over and led the way. And a big sigh of relief for the head coach. I mean, that's huge, though. That's one. huge for the team and how they feel about their coach making calls. Going to run on first down. Bean keeps it this time and gets a yard and a half over the right side. That's what's made him good. I mean, yeah. he can throw the football, but he can also get out and run. In fact, Coach Leipold said probably the fastest quarterback they faced this year. Yeah, I mean, he has great speed, and, and the, it, that's a testament to Kansas State's defense because he only gets two yards on there. It's a perfect read. The defensive end crashes, and those two linebackers fly over the top and get to him before he can ever get going. Wilson in motion. They run the ball on second down. This is Neal. And he steps through a couple of tackles and takes it out across the 40-yard line. It'll set up another third down for Kansas. The tackle by committee for Kansas State. They're really doing a nice job of rallying to the ball early. I mean, they really like Devin Neal because of this. Broken tackles. Ball. Nothing's there. Find a way to get vertical and find space for your team. Very good job by Devin Neal. And that's the maturity, right? The maturity of pressing the hole, not moving too quickly, getting underneath a, a defender and getting on the outside to get some yards. Injured player for Kansas State. will step aside early on here in Lawrence. Injured player for the Wildcats, Reggie Stubblefield. He's been able to walk to the sideline. We'll monitor his progress as we give you team goals. Sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. Yeah, for K-State, you have got to find a way to get the ball to the 5'7 and under crew. Number 88, Phillip Brooks, and number 22, Deuce Vaughn. And in forced turnovers, Kansas has given the ball away. And for Kansas, you have to manufacture a run game, which we've seen them do early in this game. And secondly, you have to way to chip to trap to block Felix and UDK Uzan. It's like three times you knocked that name right out of the park. Third down and three. Last time on third down, Kansas read the ball, ran the ball, came up short, and here they'll lose yardage back to the 40. That was Neil Toten at left side, and he was brought to the ground by Daniel Green, the other deuce. Yeah, right? We talk a lot about deuce on the offensive side of the ball, but Daniel Green is another deuce. He has 49 tackles on the season in one sack, and he is a sideline-to-sideline -side linebacker that they really like, and that's a big stop for Kansas State on the first drive. So they're not going to go for it on fourth down here. Reese Vernon will punt. And back deep for Kansas State, Phillip Brooks. Jayhawk fans remember him last year when he took two back for a touchdown. Preseason All-American returner, 
This one goes down out across the 25-yard line, and that is where Kansas State will start things with their first offensive possession and their leader, the quarterback, Skyler Thompson. He's been Mr. Everything for this offense. Yeah, I mean, he's extremely talented. He is smart. He knows exactly where he wants to go with the ball, and, and Coach Kleiman talked about his ability to know the why on plays this year. He said getting into this season, he wanted to know why so that him and the offensive coordinator could be on the same page when they think about calling plays and when plays are coming up. We saw what he's done in his last four games. Really good last week in a home victory against TCU. Wildcats trying to win for a third consecutive week in conference play, and they start things on the ground. This is Vaughn across the 35 and near the 40 as we look at the starting lineup for the Wildcats that includes number 22. We'll be saying his name all day long. Yeah, Deuce is going to get loose as much as they can get it to him. They want to give him the ball early and often, but the reason that offensive line is talented, Cooper Beeb and Josh Revis is where they want to go with the ball when they need a yard, but Deuce Vaughn, he's the engine that makes this offense offense go in both the run and the pass game. He's a special player. He's 5'6". Joe Irvin is 5'8". He's in the backfield here, and he takes it right side. First down and more as he goes near midfield. Irvin didn't play last week. Showed up for the TCU game. Was sick, so they held him out, but he's back and looks good on his opening carry of the day. That's a very good job. The motion allows for the defense to shift, and when the defense shifts, it allows the running back to get on the outside and outflank the defense immediately. You're going to see that a lot from Kansas State with their team speed. They want to find a way to outflank the defense and if Kansas does not keep the edge strong protect the edge that's going to happen all day empty backfield on first down Deuce Vaughn in the slot we'll see what Thompson does here pressure coming gets it off and Vaughn catches it in the plus territory down to the 42 yard line he's tackled by number three Ricky Thomas it's a very good job Kansas has more guys, but they know that their running back is going to win quickly. And when he wins quickly, the extra pressure that comes from depth or fur the furthest away will not get to the quarterback before he can get it out. Very good job by Thompson and Deuce Vaughn. Said so they want to get Deuce Vaughn at least 20 touches yeah. a game. They're well on their way in this opening drive. He gets it one more time. And big running room. Vaughn inside the 20, breaks the tackle down to the 13-yard line, and for the first time today, I say Deuce is loose. Yeah, I mean, it's just an inside zone. This is old-school football with the fullback leading through, and it parts like the Red Sea with those red uniforms, and this young man is about as talented a running back as this country has to offer. I mean, he is not big in stature, but he plays about as big as anybody I've seen. Student of the game, Dad is a coach, very knowledgeable, understands every aspect of it. Gets a breather here, first down and 10 from the 13-yard line. Thompson going to throw. Not much doing. Goes to the fullback. That's Jax Deneen. And a nice tackle by Ricky Thomas Jr. from his safety position. Here's the defense for Kansas. We'll say Kyron Johnson a lot today, number 15. Yeah, I mean, he's very talented to get after the passer, but the, the Kansas State coaches that raved about his ability in the run game to redirect when he's in the read option and, and get back to places where he just shouldn't get to. Coach Borland, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, said he's a plus player, right, where he do, does his job, but he also gets a chance to help others in their responsibilities. Saw a shot there. Kenny Logan, number one, leading tackler as a safety, really special player on the defensive side of the ball for Kansas. Kansas State throwing on second and near 15 yards, and Malik Knowles with a great catch. Nice pass there by Thompson, and it should be first down and goal for the Wildcats. That's a very good job. Some people say it's a bad pass behind him, but you can see the defender is on the front shoulder, so you throw it behind, so not only do you protect it from that defender, but you protect him from a big hit from the safety. Very good job by Skylar Thompson. Find a way to get that ball in there with perfect ball placement. It's not going to be a first down. He was short. Third down and one to go for the Wildcats. And now a timeout on the field. Kansas State wants to talk it over. Tomorrow, catch a special Fox NFL Sunday pregame show live from Annapolis, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Then at 4, 
It's one of the biggest games of the year. Little AFC versus the NFC as the Packers take on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. It all kicks off tomorrow on Fox in the Fox Sports app. Yeah, Jordan Love will get his first start of the season, get a chance to play against a, a reeling almost Kansas City team. But Patrick Mahomes, let's not forget, he's still Patrick Mahomes. So tough task for Jordan Love and the, and the Packers without Aaron Rodgers. If I had told you in August when we get to November, the Chiefs record is going to be this and Mahomes numbers are going to be where they are. You would have said what? Absolutely <laughs> not. You don't know ball. Adam. You don't know ball. It, it, that's fair. I don't know ball, <laughs> but I'm surprised as well at what the Chiefs are doing. Absolutely. But, but a 17 game season. It's yeah. not even Thanksgiving. Still, still, the the Chiefs, you go. still got all those talented players. And so does the Kansas State football team. Here we go on third and one. Deuce Vaughn the carry. He's got the first down and takes it close to the one. It'll be first and goal, Wildcats. When we talk to the coaches, they want to emphasize that Deuce Vaughn is not a scat back, right? He is a every down back that can run between the tackles. He can pass protect. He knows everything that has to be known on the field. Like you talked about earlier, dad was a coach. And that was a perfect example, right? He had an opportunity to burst to the outside, but he was patient, stayed inside, found a way to get one yard and get a fresh set of downs here at the two-yard line. Three carries, 40 yards, a catch for nine. He's putting together a nice highlight reel already. And he gets it again on first and goal. He pushes forward. Did he get in? No signal yet. And they do give it to him. Touchdown, Kansas State. Deuce Vaughn in the end zone again. Adam, I can't wait to get a look at this. It's like the little engine that could. He gets the ball right. He stopped initially, but the legs just continue to drive, and he powers his way into the end zone and forces the referee to call this a touchdown. How about that block from Josh Rivas, 6'6", 317-pound senior, getting it done from his left guard position and paving the way for Vaughn to get the first six points of the day. You know, when, when you when you come into a game and they're reviewing, that's where it's taking a little long to make sure they want to be sure it's a score. But they've confirmed it now. Uh, you know, some people, you know, hype games up, right? Announcers and, and talk about players, and then those players turn out to not be as good. I mean, he is as advertised to start this game. Jack, uh, excuse me, Chris Tennant made his college debut kicking last week, was four for four, and he starts today perfect in Lawrence, Kansas, where so far it's been the Deuce Vaughn Show. Wildcats on top of the Jayhawks. Seven nothing. Kansas State leads Kansas seven nothing early. Five forty to play in our first quarter. The scoring drive eight plays, seventy two yards. It was all about number twenty two. Yeah, Deuce Vaughn and that offensive line uh, really had their way with the Kansas defense. And if the game continues on that path, it's going to be a lot of trouble. We talked to Coach Messingham yesterday, and he talked about how he wanted this game to start. He wanted his team to be fast, confident, physical, and take care of the ball. And all those things were on display in that first drive. Kenny Logan going to take it in at the goal line and bring it out across the 15. Breaks a tackle to the 20 and will be written down at the 24-yard line. That's where Kansas will set up shop for their second drive of the day when we come back. I said today for K-State, it's the Deuce Vaughn Show. Last weekend against TCU, it was all about Felix and DK Uzama. Four sacks tied a school record. Yeah, I mean, he was special. And you see there, he's got six fingers up because he had two strip sacks. And because of a technicality, he won't get credit for those. He'll just have forced fumbles because the ball fumbled forward or something that's going on. They're trying to get that fixed. But this young man was special, leading the country in sacks and forced fumbles. Yeah, he created the sack fumble. Yes. It rolls across the line of scrimmage, yes. which means it goes in the stat book as a run instead yep. of a pass, and he doesn't get credit for the sack. He thought he had put himself in the national record books. Instead, he ties the K-State record, four in a game. Here's Bean on first down, completes to Arnold. And after a heavy dose of the run on that first drive, they come out throwing. 
mean, you can see when, you, when your quarterback struggled, right, 3 of 10, only 10 yards a week ago, you have to find easy completions for him. And we talked to Bean a few weeks ago, and his desire when he's struggling is to get quicks, right? Quicks called, quick slants, or hitches just like we just saw one player go. Those are the things that are going to get him going, and his coaches understand that, and they can make that happen for him. Lasseter, the motion man. He's the top receiver for the Jayhawks. First eight games of the year. Dean rolling out on second down and three. Going deep, and he's going for a man that's wide open. That's Trevor Wilson, the transfer from Buffalo. He came over with the coaching staff, and he was open behind the defense there. And what else gets your guy going? When he's able to run, you get him on the edge, and then you can see this isn't the actual route. But Wilson throws his hand up because, hey, they busted the covers. I'm open, and I'm going deep. And very good job by Jason Bean finding him. This is about as good a start as he can have. He's already matched his number of completions from a week ago, early and only in the second drive of this game. That was Yeast that ran him down, one of the reliable safeties defensively for the Wildcats. There's a look at Wilson. Put up good numbers last year at Buffalo, as we said, made the move to Kansas with the coaching staff, and he has impressed. Quick pitch here to Lachlan on the left side. Gets a few on first down. And he might have gotten banged up there. Lachlan sharing time with a true freshman, Devin Neal. Has it. Yeah, hopefully he's fine because that's their Swiss Army knife, the guy that they love to get in the running pass game, just like Deuce Vaughn on the other side. And as you can see, when, when you get a, a DB jumping on your back and pulling you down, it, it, it can present some issues. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. K-State leading Kansas, 7-0, 3.53 to play in the opening quarter. Devin Gardner, I'm Adam Alexander. And that's Tory Lachlan. Looked like his right ankle got turned as he went to the sideline and was tackled, so they've put the uh, boot on it, they'll load him up, and uh, hopefully everything is okay there. You hate to see, especially this early in the game, yeah, someone get knocked out. I mean, Torrey Lachlan is, is a big part of this offense, you know, maybe not as big a part as Neal, but he sh has his role catching and running, and they're going to miss him in this game. And you can see, the, though it's a ri rivalry and, and a very big rivalry, you can see the K-State players coming over and, and giving him some love and showing him some love because they know when that air cast comes, I was in a situation in a rivalry game against Ohio State when uh, JT Bear goes down and you see that air cast come out and you just do not want to see that happen to a, a, an opposing player, a player on your team. You don't want to see it happen to anybody. Yeah, you mentioned it. Nice change of pace guy is Lachlan for Neal. Really two different styles of runner. Good receiver out of the backfield. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we mentioned the importance of a quick start for Jason Bean. So far, so good, especially when you compare what he's doing today to how things started last week at Oklahoma State. Yeah, I mean, but we have to give a lot of uh, credit to Coach Colton Nicky, uh, the offensive coordinator, because he, we talked to him last night, and we, t we talked about how are you going to get him going. He says he's going to get us some easy throws and find ways for him to play fast and play free, and that's what he's doing. And here it goes again. Just over top of Arnold there, incomplete. We'll set up third down and seven. And that's what you can't have. The miscues that then kind of put you behind the chains is going to be third and seven. Yeah, I mean, that's not a perfect throw by Bean, but it's very, very catchable there, Adam. you got to make that catch if you're Lawrence Arnold, number two in red. you got to make sure you frame that up and don't try to run without the ball. He kind of takes his eyes off of it and tries to get going before he catches it. They will take their time offensively. Play clock down inside of five seconds now. Bean running left. He's going to keep it, and he is going to get nailed. That was Daniel Green who got him. There is a flag on the play, but Green will flat bring it. Ooh. Wow. And Bean's a little banged up. Daniel Green or Deuce Green may be listening to the broadcast, and he's letting us know, hey, there's another Deuce on this field. Offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. 
So holding the call against Kansas, that's our referee, Scott Campbell. And now we see the hit from Green on Bean. I mean, this is how you boom. That's exactly how you draw it up when you're teaching a kid in Little League to tackle the ball carrier. Head up, lead with your shoulders. I mean, just get the guy square in the chest. Very good job by Daniel Green, or Deuce Green as he likes to be called. 40-yard attempt for Jacob Borchella from the left hash. Six of ten on the season, make it seven of 11. That one's right down the boulevard, and the Jayhawks are on the board. So a nice scoring drive for Kansas, and they trail 7-3. Well, we mentioned earlier, this rivalry dates back to 1902. And there have been some good moments over the years. How about that paper, newspaper clipping? 1995, the only time they met as ranked teams on both sides of the ledger. Win streaks. I mean, this is everything you want in a rivalry, right? It has all the drama. A carrying coaches off. Obviously, Bill Snyder was amazing at Kansas State for so many years. Yeah, you mentioned Bill Snyder, and you look at the all-time numbers. From 41 to 81, it was all about the Jayhawks. It really turned around it with Snyder. Who? Yeah, and, and he's been the difference maker <laughs> yeah. and changed the culture yeah. of football at Kansas State. Yeah, Bill Snyder was a great coach uh, and, and really found a way to get guys to come to Kansas State, but also find a way to develop them. And that's why that rivalry kind of changed, and, and Kansas State has been in control ever since. Tabor Allen to kick it off for Kansas. Malik Knowles, the return man. He's taken two back this season. One against Oklahoma. One against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. This little chip kick here. And it's going to be out of bounds right across the 30-yard line. That was Brooks who caught it and ran it forward. Tell me about this ball. I mean, he's one all-purpose cat, as you can see, in his career, 1346 and 785 on, in the air. I mean, he has been everything, in, like I talked about in the open. In his first two seasons, I don't think we've seen a guy as good as him as far as the run and catching the ball of the backfield. He, he's been special and already today. Nine receptions, 51 total yards. He is being explosive to start the game, and here he goes for his second shot it's all about the touches for deuce vaughn and there's his sixth touch of the day you talked about his numbers and this time he picks up a couple caleb sampson came up made the tackle from his nose guard position it's a good job by sampson defeating the block of ben adler number 63 on the offensive line for kansas state Strong hands, defeats the block, and finds a way to get in the backfield. Thompson to throw on second and eight. Plenty of time. Loading a deep one for Knowles, who's got it. He's going to score. Malik Knowles, touchdown, Kansas State. Eight yards, Thompson to Knowles. They're doing it on the ground. They're doing it through the air, and the Wildcats have taken early control in this one. I mean, how long will you be able to cover, right? And, and that's what happened there. That's a coverage, that's a uh, protection touchdown, I want to call it, right? A protection, you know, you got cover sacks. That's a protection touchdown where Kansas State just has all day, and when you have receivers running all over the place, something good's got to happen. Extra point is good for Chris Tennant. So this play starts off as a simple curl from the wide receiver right here. You're going to see him. He's going to get vertical and run a curl. Okay. Oh, my quarterback's moving. He's going to get down the field, and it's a nice throw. The one mistake the defensive back Mayberry makes, you can't go looking for the ball. Stay attached to your man. And on defense, they call it plaster. You have to plaster to your man when the quarterback is moving because that's what happens every single time you take a peek. Very good job by 
Thompson finding his wide receiver, Malik Knowles, down the field. And how about the day for Thompson? Four for four, 86 yards, and a touchdown. Good start for the senior. Little Wendy's 4 4 4 and, to and, start the day. And, and look at this. I mean, who, th who knew that Kansas State was a big play team, but for the seventh time this year, they've hit a deep shot of 50 plus yards. Yeah, man, when you look at that graphic, you say, wow, 18 to 20, 35 games, only eight. And in nine games this season, they're at seven and early. In this game, they're at one. Very versatile offensive attack. Fair catch. And the Jayhawks will start this drive at the 25-yard line. Hey, Adam, you, you like that 4-4-4. Do you know Wendy's has breakfast now? Oh, yeah. I you mean, got a side deal? I'm just saying. Wendy's has breakfast. And so Jason Bean, who got hit on that last drive, goes out. And the new face at quarterback, Miles Kendrick, a redshirt senior who was named a captain. And here is the hit that knocked Bean out of the game. Yeah, I mean, slammed head on the ground very, very hard. No, no opportunity to brace himself. Kendrick got some reps in the second half last week. Let's see if he can continue on some of the success that he was able to garner. They start with a run. And it's going to be Neal that gets about four yards. Now, the good news for Miles Kendrick, he's played, right? Played the second half last week at Oklahoma State, but he's got a history. He's got experience. That's what helps you out in this situation. Absolutely. I mean, last week, 6 of 8, 75% completions, only 34 yards, but he saw completions. He had an opportunity, and he rushed the ball nine times for 32 yards. Being able to get his feet wet a week ago has primed him to be able to try to be successful here in this rivalry against Kansas State. Second down and seven. He's going to throw it. And this one going to be caught. Nice pitch and catch there. Lasseter pulls it in near the 45-yard line. That'll be a first down. And now Kendrick is down. Are you kidding me? I mean, this is a lot of what he's good at, extending the play. He extends it all the way out. And then you... Oh. Got a big guy sliding down your body and falling on your lower body. It makes it very difficult because you can't get your feet out of there. And that's a big man falling on you. I, I really hope that he's all right. That's a catch. Looks like it's going to be for Kansas. But that's two quarterbacks in three plays. Well, it was Jalen Pickle that was going after Kendrick and made the tackle near the sideline as he got the pass off. And, and it's not just the two quarterbacks. Tory Lachlan was carted off as well. I yeah. mean, this is the, the worst nightmare for head coach Lance Leipold in his first season at Kansas. I mean, it's, and in this game, right, especially since they started so well, right, they, they, they got three on the board, but they were moving the ball. It was a lot different than what they saw a week ago. And then now... Last drive, you're trying to pick up a first down. You got Bean on an outside zone, and, and Green, boom, just runs through the line of scrimmage and finishes him all the way to the ground. And then you got a completion, right? A good play, a positive play, and, and the big fella falls down on the quarterback's lower body. Now, we did see Bean warming up, so perhaps he is okay, can come back in the football game. We also saw Jalen Daniels on the sideline, the sophomore who would be next on the depth chart. It's a nice clean play, right? Football play, finishing the play, but oh, you hate to see that. You hate to see it. So he's putting no pressure on it as he goes to the sideline. Miles Kendrick is out, and it looks like Jason Bean is ready to go. That, that's really good news for a football team yeah. that looked to be going to the third quarterback on the depth chart 14 minutes in. 
Yeah, I mean, that was, <laughs> that's about as scary as it can get uh, from, for a coaching staff when you they feel like you have a good game plan. And you even have two guys that can run that game plan. When you start getting to the third option, I mean, unless you're Ohio State in 2014, it's going to be difficult to continue to be successful. Bean inherits good field position. First down across the 45-yard line for Kansas. Last drive got him three. They'll run it on first down here, and this is Neal, the freshman, into plus territory as he goes to the Wildcat 47. Reggie Stubblefield, who was banged up earlier in the game, back in and made the tackle. Six-yard gain on first down is exactly where they want to be. They need to stay ahead of the chains, and, and the way they do that is getting explosive runs, maybe not the 20-yard or the 50-yard plays, but getting six yards on first down allows you to have a playbook that is conducive to success on second down and a short four. Could be the last play of the opening quarter. Neal again going left. And he'll be short of the first down. And that will do it. 15 minutes in the books in Lawrence, Kansas. It's K-State leading on the road 14-3. But the Jayhawks on the move when we return. K-State. Coming out of the gate strong in the Sunflower Showdown, trying to maintain the Governor's Cup. They've won it the last 12 years and lead 14-3 after the opening quarter, but Kansas moving the ball nicely early. Yeah, absolutely. Already more yards than they had a week ago just in that first quarter, and they're finding a way to come first down right maybe not on third down the way they want to but on second down they're getting good chunks and they have another opportunity here to pick up a first down on third down and kind of change those forces that they've seen being in at quarterback third down and two works out of the pistol with Neil behind him and a whistle and we might have had some movement I thought Neil might have been leaning and there could have been an offensive lineman that moved as well yeah, you're gonna get that start, start, number 45 offense, offense five yard five penalty, penalty still third down and these referees have got a good eye because that was the smallest of flinches from Trevor Cardell number 45 who is primarily comes in as a blocking tight end uh, he just literally just moves just an inch just a smidge and the referees pick it up now you're at a third and seven where this is not where Kansas wants to be. They had a very good opportunity on third and two, but now it makes it a little bit difficult to pick the first down up. Imagine that Bean's legs will play a big part into this pickup. That was Lassiter in motion. And another whistle. And I think motion again on the Jayhawks. Ball start, start, start. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Offense. Offense. Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Yeah, when he gets to his motion position, he starts to move forward, right? And it's not a lot, right? Just like the past one. It's not a lot, but he gets to his motion position and he starts to move forward just a little bit, and the referees call him for a false start. You've gone from third and two to third and 12. This is not at all where Lance Leipold wants to be in regard to down and distance. Yeah, so I, I go screen here. I find a way. And remember, their screen guy, Tory Lachlan, is not in the ball game anymore. They fake the handoff to Neal. Bean rolling and throwing, and this one's incomplete. And another flag for a third consecutive play. Could and be a roughing call. Yeah, it looked like Trevor Wilson was celebrating the call, and Bean is a little gimpy here. So he Personal foul. Roughing the pass out, number 55. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. Down. Yeah, you're going to see Cody Fletcher who comes out of the middle. He is a guy that plays with his hair on fire. He sees an opportunity to get this quarterback, and he runs and kind of gets him in the face a little bit, tries to pull up, but it was a tad bit late. And, you know, in a robbery like this, the referees have to do a good job of controlling the emotions, right? And so a uh, 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 call like that sets the tempo for the game. Hey, no extra stuff. Play the game cleanly. Fletcher's not happy about it. Right, right in front of the referee. You yeah. cannot do that. Yep. Yeah. So they go from third and two to third and 12. Now first and 10 near the 40-yard line. Neal gets the carry left side. Not much doing there. McPherson, one of those that comes up to make the tackle. 
Now, now let's talk situational football. You want to find a way to get six yards on this play. Five to six yards will put you in a position on third down, barring penalties, that will let you get the first down and continue this drive, which is what they're looking for. They're looking for their team to be able to finish drive, right? And it starts with getting a first down on third down, but it really starts with the second down and seven where you can pick up a few yards. This is Neal again. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. And he'll end up going the wrong direction. And once again, third down and long for the Jayhawks. Austin Moore comes out of the middle and defeats the block so quickly from the tight end. Very good job of him running and beating the tight end to the spot. The tight end just has to be a lot faster than 89, Mason Fairchild. He has to be a lot more swift and getting and cutting that guy off. Great job by number 41, Moore, getting to the running back and stopping him behind the line of scrimmage. Now you're at 30 is what you don't want. And UDK Uzama came over and cleaned him up. Came all the way across the field showing what a great athlete he is. Being on third down. Under pressure again. He's going to run. He's got room. The first down and more sliding down at the 25-yard line. That's what he can do. I mean, we, I would love to see him have much better ball security, but he does a good job of feeling the rush and then getting out. And when he gets out, he's about as good as anybody running the football down the field. Coach Leipold said he's one of our fastest players, if not the fastest player on our team. I mean, he can really get up and go. And if he can do that all day, that's what most teams have trouble with, but especially K-State. They do not do well with quarterbacks that can pick up first downs with their legs. Jayhawks need a touchdown here. Yes, they do. Last time they were down this way, settled for a field goal on first down. Neal churning forward. When you play this 3-3-5 style of defense that K-State plays, it allows for opportunities for you to run the football and have some success just because they just don't have as many guys in the box with five defensive backs removed. It allows you to get some, some traction, if you will, running the football. And that's what they're trying to do with Bean, and they're really staying with it, accompanied by Neal. Amari Pesek Hickson in the ball game at running back. If you weren't with us earlier, Tory Lachlan went down. He's out with injury. And that's where they'll go here. A pickup of three on the play. Should set up about third down and four. Yeah, Pesek Hicks, Hickson is a, a bigger back. Right, 230 pounds, a guy that you can really have as a bruiser to spell Devin Neal. So he doesn't have to have every single carry, right? And that's a good job, right? He gets five just when he gives Neal a break. That is what they need. They need someone that can give him just a second, just a beat so he can rest, and then get him back in the game. Very good job by Pesek Hickson. Neal is back in now for third down and five. Bean has been good today. Four or five, 62 yards. Could be a passing situation here. And it will be. Looking left, throwing deep. This is Arnold and incomplete. Nice coverage by Boydo in the corner of the end zone. That ball is incomplete, but I absolutely love it from Bean because he wants to get the ball quickly out to the flat. But he sees the defenders driving on it, and then he throws a nice outside throw. Obviously, you want to keep it in bounds to give your guy a chance. But you can't turn the ball over here when you probably have points that you can put on the board. Very good job by Bean not making a mistake in the red zone and allowing for Bortilla to get a chance. Trying to go two for two on the day. Bortilla up, and this one is no good. So a great drive for Kansas gets them no points and they trail 14-3 and Chris Kleiman happy about that on the Kansas State sideline. Wildcats get the ball when we come back. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. Kansas State leading on the road against Kansas. 14-3 our score. Jayhawks just missed an opportunity to get on the board for a second consecutive drive. Skylar Thompson, hot start for the Wildcats. You saw the numbers there. Four of four, 86 yards. And here 
is Deuce. Vaughn carries it for close to another first down. Seems like we haven't seen Kansas State on offense in quite a long time, but Deuce Vaughn picks right up where he left off with a nice run on first down to pick up another first down. They've been mixing him in and out today. Yeah. They want to keep him fresh, right? They know they're going to ride him. They know they're going to give him a bunch of carries. But if he's fresh, he's at his best. And they're doing a very good job of it. And he's taking great advantage of all the opportunities he's getting. Seven touches today. This is Irvin taking it left side. He's been solid as well. And close to another first down as he crosses the 40 to the 42. And they're going to signal first and 10 Wildcats. I think the Kansas, their defensive ends are, are, are a little bit overplaying the read option, right? Thompson is not a guy that's going to pull it a bunch and run. Had an injury earlier this year, so he's not a huge threat in the run game. And, and if I were Kansas, I would make him prove it first. They're dedicating too many guys to him and allowing their edge to be extremely soft. And it's allowing these running backs to get the edge very, very quickly. Look at that. Yards per rush, nearly 10 for K-State. They're going to throw it here. And Thompson retreats and just throws this one away. And maybe an uh, intentional yeah. grounding ball didn't get to the line of scrimmage. He's going to point and say, I have a guy coming back to the ball. I don't know if they're going to give it to him, though. And the officials talk about this, and it was over on the Kansas sideline, so I'm sure they're getting plenty of help from the coaching staff in red. Here's the line of scrimmage right here. He has to get the ball past there for it to be a legal play. And now a flag has been there, thrown. Pulls it there. Intentional grounding. Grounding. Number seven. Seven. Offense. The quarterback was out of the pocket. However, the ball did not cross or reach the line of scrimmage. Lost and down. From the spot of the foul. Second down. Well, that's big for this Kansas defense. Yeah. Because just just like the Jayhawks, the Wildcats like to play in, in front of the chains and not behind them. And, and they are so much more successful when it's run, setting up the pass. Now maybe more of a predictable passing situation, second down along. Yeah, without question. And for, for clarification, so you know at home, when you're out of the pocket, you can throw the ball anywhere you want, but it has to cross the line of scrimmage unless there's a player in the area. No player in the area, ball doesn't get to the line of scrimmage. That's a penalty. They're throwing here to Knowles. Already a touchdown catch today. This little wide receiver screen. And he's got a nice pickup across the 35. It'll be third down and long for the Wildcats. He does a good job of getting a lot of it back, though, on that little quick screen. Very good job. Makes it, breaks the tackle early in this game. Kansas is back to the Kansas of old right before Oklahoma State. Missing tackles, and, and that's not going to be conducive to success. They have to find a way to get these talented athletes on the ground, and this is an opportunity right here on the third and very long. It was third and 30. Knowles gets 15 of that back to set up third down and 15. Empty set for Thompson. Deuce Vaughn, slot on the near side. Thompson steps up, fires, and it's going to be caught. And that'll be a first down, down around the 45-yard line, getting the catch there, Cade Warner. Man, how about the strong hands of Cade Warner? You're going to see him right here get vertical and run a dig, right? And great job with his head and eyes. Getting the DB to stay on the outside, and then he comes in and snatches the ball out of there. Just watch these hands, and it's that's a great defensive play, right? You're trying to rake the ball out, but those strong hands allow him to keep the ball. That's a big pickup and a great throw by Skylar Thompson right on the numbers. And I spoke too soon. I, I thought he had it easily, but they're able to hold him short of the line to gain, so it'll bring up not even fourth down and one, fourth down and two, and a punt situation for Zentner and K-State. And Lasseter calls for the fair catch, but this one going to be down after a Kansas bounce out across the 30-yard line. K-State leading 14-3 in Lawrence, Kansas. After defeating Jimmy Uso last week, King Woods goes head-to-head -head with the Universal Champion Roman Reigns. Who will rule SmackDown, the King or the Tribal Chief? Find out at an all-new edition of Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Big drive here for Kansas, trailing 14-3 and keeping in mind that K-State will get the ball 
to begin the second half, you got to make the most of your opportunities. And a little trickeration here, the flip to Wilson on the end around. He didn't get much. Boydo came up to make the tackle. He's been a nice player from that corner position. That's a very good job by Kansas State. I mean, that play is usually, you want to run that against a man coverage, right? So that opposite corner that gets taken across the field. But there, Kansas State is just in zone, and so everybody's sitting there waiting for it to happen. But some yards are picked up. See if they can find a way to get five to six here on, on, on second down. It's Neal in the backfield with Bean. Second down and eight for the Jayhawks. Quick throw right side. McBride, the intended receiver, but this one goes out of bounds. Rush East was over there defending from his safety spot. Now third and eight. Yeah, that's a play that would have been able to pick up a first down. Uh, you got soft coverage, which you're going to see some from Kansas State because they don't want to they want to force you to drive the ball down the field. They don't believe that Bean is capable of just chipping away, chipping away, right? So they want to stop from the big play. So they're going to give you some of those throws and there Bean just a bit outside misses his target. Third and eight at the 34. Bean to throw on third and eight. Here comes pressure. That's Green that runs him out of there, and it's batted down. Great play defensively by Nate Matlack. Yeah, he remembers that number 22 running in there, so he had to get out. And then he tries to get the ball out to his outlet, but good job by number 97 in white. Nate Matlack making sure that he stops that play from getting started. Matlack, a red shirt freshman. It's a big boy. They really like him. Vernon punts it away. And Brooks going to let this one bounce, and it takes a Jayhawk roll inside the 25, and they'll touch it down just outside the 20. That's where Kansas State will have the football. When we come back, Wildcats on top of their rival, 14-3. State on top, 14-3. Three drives today, 190 yards. They're doing it a couple of different ways, on the ground, through the air, and some big plays as well. Yeah, I mean, some big plays on the ground from Deuce Vaughn, which is what we expected, and then you get Skylar Thompson finding his man. Number four, Malik Knowles down the field for a big third play on that one play, right, when this quarterback scrambles around. This drive starts... At the 21-yard line, and a nice catch here. Keenan Garber able to pull it in in front of Jacoby Bryant, the freshman corner. If you can score on two of three drives, 66%, especially when you're scoring touchdowns, that's going to win a lot of football games. Yeah, I mean, that's a good start. And you can see on this drive, the adjustment for Kansas is they move to their cover four defense where they can have their safeties in a position to stop the run and come down fast to make sure Deuce Vaughn can't get started. Landry Weber, the motion man. Thompson gonna pass on second and four. And there's Vaughn out of the backfield across the 45-yard line. First down, he'll take it to the 47. And what's Kansas State's answer? They find a way to get Deuce Vaughn down the field in the softness of the zone. He comes from the running back position. And you can see in cover four, when it's not a run, those safeties get deep like a cover two, but stay on the hash. And Deuce Vaughn just finds the sweet spot right behind the linebackers and in between those safeties and catches the ball. Nice catch by Deuce Vaughn. Look at the line for Skylar Thompson. Eight for eight, 140 yards and a touchdown. That last one, 19 yards to his running back, Deuce Vaughn. They'll hand it off here to Knowles, who went in motion. He's got running room. Inside Jayhawk territory, drug out of bounds at the 42. It's a good job by Kansas State making Kansas play depth and width. You've seen him take shots down the field, but now you can see on a jet sweep where he motions back and tries to see if his man, and he gets on the outside, and all of the Kansas players are just running, right, trying to find a way, and it's almost a track meet to the first down mark. Sammy Wheeler did a really good job from his tight end position of cutting Gavin Potter and open up the door for Knowles. 
Five minutes to go. First and ten inside the 45. Quick pitch to Irvin, who stays on his feet. There are those broken tackles you talked about. Missed tackles for Kansas. First down inside the 30. Yeah, I mean, this, this one-two punch of Irvin and Vaughn, two sophomores, is very, very good. It's just an easy power play, right? He just comes right behind his fullback. His fullback doesn't even get touched until he's 10 yards down the field. I mean, it, Kansas has to find a way to manufacture a way to stop the run. Insert guys in the box and trust your DBs with one of your best DBs in the back end, Kenny Logan Jr. Allow him to control the back end, but that front seven has to find a way. We talk about Vaughn, Irvin having a good day as well. That'll put him up close to 40 yards on the afternoon rushing. The first down carry gets him about three. You know what's interesting is Kansas has done a great job today of working the clock. Unfortunately, they've not gotten the payoff on those long drives, and that's why they trail 14-3. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, on that last play, Rich Miller, who the coaches were raving about, who came over from Buffalo, he spills that run very aggressively, and that's how you slow down this run game. You have to sacrifice yourself. You have to find guys in red uniforms to sacrifice to make pileups so they don't have anywhere to run. Thompson to throw on second and seven. He hasn't missed today. This will be his first incompletion and deflected away. And really good defense there on the part of Rich Miller right on cue. I mean, that's a very good job by Kyron Johnson getting to the quarterback. But Rich Miller in pass coverage against one of the best running back pass catchers in the land finds a way to get there and make a play. Very good job because that's almost no, no man's land for every linebacker in the country. Rich Miller, the Detroit native, did a very good job. We talked to the coaches about him, and they said, hey, if we had a bunch of Rich Millers running around, we'd be a lot better off. They love the way he prepares and the way he plays. He's got that Detroit mentality out of Detroit Martin Luther King. And you said it. He came with the coaching staff from Buffalo in the offseason. And they came down to Kansas. Here's third and seven to Deuce Vaughn, who's inside the 10. And near the goal line, he'll be shut down at the one-yard line. He has been masterful today out of the backfield, catching the ball and running it as well. Find a way to outflank the defense. You're going to get hit. The running back coming right across the formation and into the flat. And sometimes he gets lost, right? He gets lost behind those big offensive linemen and it, with his small stature. He gets outside, and once he's outside, it's tough. You almost get a hard horse call there, but he drags the defender all the way down to the one. Very good job. Once again, I mean, I can't say enough about Deuce Vaughn and his ability to do whatever the coaches need him to do. He has so many skills. And the give to the fullback, and it's going to be a touchdown. Kansas State building on their advantage. They go to the up man, and it's good for six. Trevor Erickson got the call. How about the big fella Ben Sinek getting in the end zone? Very good job of him. You got to let the Wildcat eat. Yeah. Right? He's been running through, making blocks on linebackers and sometimes safeties. Allow him to get a get in on the action a bit. Yeah, Ben Sennett, you don't see him much. Yeah. But here he gets a tote, puts it in the end zone, and it's now a 23 advantage for K-State pending the extra point. Yeah, he's done a great job in the run game, right? So you reward him for all his services. You hand him on the quick fullback dive, and he powers his way in the end zone. Very good job by him. You can see all of his teammates elated that he's able to get that touchdown. Extra point is good. Okay, you pile it on at home trailing Kansas State. 21 3 is our score. It's brutal out of here. Coming up on the State Farm halftime, for the first time in two decades, TCU gets set to take the field without Gary Patterson. And can Texas slam the brakes on a three game losing skid? We'll preview their matchup with Iowa State. Adam, Devin, we'll see you at the break. Thanks, Rob. Here it's been all K State leading 21 to 3 over Kansas. 2.50 to play in our opening half. And this one going to go through the end zone to touch back. And the Jayhawks will start at the 25-yard line. It's been a tough day injury-wise for the Jayhawks. Yeah, I mean, they have 
They've been bitten by the injury bug early in this game. Uh, three guys, you know, coming out of the game, and, and it's been a pile of game. But this is what you see, and, and it hasn't been anything dirty. It's been very clean, but it's been violent. It's been aggressive. As you can see, a new quarterback trotting out, Jalen Daniels, who has some experience. He was the youngest quarterback to start a game for Kansas. His first three games started, get this, Adam, he was only 17 years old, right? That's a young man who made some mistakes, hasn't had a whole bunch of opportunities since, but he's back in. And they'll run the ball on first down and probably a smart way to start it. And this time carrying the football is Pesek Hickson. He came off the sideline getting time when Torrey Lachlan went down, the running back who twisted his ankle and was carted off in that first quarter. There's a good look at Daniels. Six foot two fifteen out of California. Second down and two. Nice pickup. On first down, they'll run it again. And a nifty move in the hole by Pesic Hickson. <laughs> you usually see a move like that from Devin Neal, right? And how about the big bruiser? Pesic Hickson getting the ball and immediate pressure in his face and he spins out and finds a way to create a positive play and create a third and one. Cody Fletcher comes up makes the stop for K-State third down and one. You know this reminds me a little bit of last week at Oklahoma State. Kansas would get in these third and short situations yeah. couldn't finish the deal to move the chains. Yeah you got to find a way to convert. Now I would put the ball in the hands of the quarterback who's a good runner. And they run it again with 23, Pesek Hickson. And I don't think he got enough. Now keep in mind, the yellow knot line is not official. And really good penetration by Timmy Horn. Yeah, he does a great job of getting getting in the backfield and playing in the offensive backfield. But I, I don't love that, that, that call just because you've got Devin Neal, right? Early so, on the field, there was a line to gain. It was made. Previous play is under further review. They're going to review it here, but I, I get Devin Neal in the game, right? Get him, a, get him back in the game. He, he's your best runner. Uh, and your most time to player. This is a big situation, right? This is a big part in the game where you've got one minute, 20 seconds left, and you want to try to get down the field and make sure because Kansas State gets the ball back, and this game could get away from you. But here's another look to see. I mean, that is playing in the offensive backfield if I've ever seen it, and he needs to get across that line, and he just doesn't do it. Yeah, the tip of the ball, wherever it is, needs to touch that white line that you see that's covered by the yellow. And, and I'm not sure it's there, but because the call was made on the field that he did get it, let's see if Mike Pereira think, what Mike Pereira thinks about this. You know, I have to tell you, I think he's short, but again, when you look at the line feed directly down the line, you can't see the ball. So I think you, as they say here, as it's already made his signal here. Yeah. You know, it's just stands, hard to right? say that he return. didn't get there. Yeah, so it just had to stand. And it does stand, Mike, to confirm first and ten for Kansas. Clock is rolling, just over a minute to play. And it'll be interesting to see how aggressive they get here with a third-string quarterback trailing 21-3. Fumble on the play. And Pesek Hickson able to cover it up. But a loss of a couple of yards, and now the Jayhawks try to play with a little pace. What the quarterback has to do, he has to take a step there. He just kind of pivots and doesn't get all the way over. Running back has to clear the ball. They try to throw, and a fumble, and another sack, and it'll be Kansas State football. And look who got him, Felix. And UDK Uzama picking up where he left off last week when he tied the school record with four. He leads the country, and you're going to get a power push and pull and get to the quarterback very good job i mean that's the skill that you see from him that all the scouts are raving about he's still a baby right he's only a sophomore but that kind of power to eject the, the tackle and then pull him through and get to the quarterback is exactly why he's very very heralded not only in his locker room but around the country so kansas did get the ball back they'll maintain it here on third down 
11 sacks on the year for the big fella. I mean, leads the country. And you DK Uzama, one of the great defensive players. And, and you think, you know, coming into the year, Duke was going to be the guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And they thought this guy was a year away, and he yeah. is produced at a high level. I mean, next man up. You, that's why you, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I know that's the saying that everybody says, but when you when your, your number's called and you get an opportunity, because this may not happen if, he, if, if his buddy does not get hurt. You know what I mean? So he has an opportunity, and he's taking full advantage, leading the country in both sacks and strip sacks with everyone he gets. Fifth forced fumble. Had a couple last week. And they run the ball with Neal on third and 16. We'll see if K-State calls a timeout here. And K-State does use their final timeout. 34 seconds to play in the first half. So you look at the longest continuous rivalries in Division I. Lehigh Lafayette, Minnesota, Wisconsin. How about the rival and rivalry in South Carolina between Clemson and the Gamecocks? North Carolina, Wake Forest, Bedlam, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. And here it is, the Sunflower Showdown dating to 1911, Kansas and Kansas State. Yeah, number 40 FBS, number five, you call, include all of college football. This is a rivalry as old as the day is long. Vernon punts. Brooks brings it in for K-State and stays on his feet. He took two back last year against the Jayhawks, and it looked like he might get free again. Takes it out close to the 45-yard line with 20 seconds to play just under in our opening half. Well, this is what it's been like the last 12 years. It's been tough. It's been tough for Kansas to try to find some traction and, and figure out a way to get over the hump here. 12 and 0 for Kansas State the last 12 years. But look at the turnovers, right? That's that's the most important part. The turnovers. So many turnovers in the games. More turnovers and, than touchdowns in that run. Yeah. How aggressive do you get here? 17 seconds left. Uh, I mean, I feel like they feel comfortable with their quarterback, uh, and, and they'll get, they'll probably take a shot here. Thompson's only missed once today. Did have the deep ball to Knowles. He's going to put it up. And got his man. Short gain on the play. This is going to be Connor Fox, the tight end who made the grab in front of Kenny Logan. Injured defensive player. That's not good. Yeah, you hate to see Logan down on the play because he has been the catalyst defensively for yeah. Kansas. He's their, he, he's their best defender. They need him to be available for them to have a chance on defense in this game. Here he is coming out of the middle like he always does and making the tackle, getting him to the ground. Kind of gets him kicked in the face there a little bit. Man, it has not been good for Kansas as far as injuries are concerned. It's good to see Kenny Logan up, walking back to the sideline under his own power, and it looks like he's going to be all right. I mean, this is a guy who had scholarship opportunities from Bama, Florida State, Miami, and a host of Big Ten schools coming out, and he chose to come to Kansas to try to change the culture. Hasn't been able to change it just yet, but he's just a junior, and, and, and things are looking up for him individually for sure. Five seconds to go in the half. So this should be the last play. And K-State will get the ball to begin half number two. And coming up. Timeout. Kansas. When we get to halftime, as Kansas calls a timeout here, the State Farm halftime report updates from what's happening around the college football world. And here... K-State has come on the road and dominated, looking for their third consecutive victory. You talked about this off the top. You know, they go 3-0 and in the non-conference. Yeah. You open up conference play against some of the best teams on your schedule. Skylar Thompson gets hurt. You fall to 0-3, mm -hmm. but now they've got it rolling again. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about 4-4-4 earlier, and they'll be 3-3-3 if they can get a chance to win this football game. And it's, it's looking good for them. They're moving the ball. They're converting on third downs, and, and their quarterback, 
uh, is playing very well. Skylar Thompson, you know, he injured himself earlier in the year, and his coaches were very surprised at how well he came back, right? In that Oklahoma game, he came back and was very explosive and was moving around well. As you can see, the, the talented Deuce Vaughn gets another carry to go into the half. But they are excited about Skylar Thompson, the way he's playing, and he's continued on that trek here as he tries to get his third straight win. 30 minutes in the books in Lawrence, Kansas. It's been all Wildcats. They lead in this one, 21 to three over their rival. The State Farm Halftime Report is coming up next on FS1. time for the second half in Lawrence, Kansas. K-State leading the rival Jayhawks. 21-3 is our score. Welcome back, everybody, with Devin Gardner. I'm Adam Alexander. You were you were dancing at halftime, yep. and the Wildcats dancing through that first half. Yeah, I mean, they play really well, and it's a lot of what we talked about in the open. When we started this game, we talked about Deuce Vaughn and his ability to have explosive plays in the run and pass game, and he did that and a lot more in that first half. I mean, he did it on the ground where he gets out, he gets vertical, he stiff arms guys, he catches the ball when they try to take the run away, and then Malik Noel on a big, big catch in that first half. I mean, they've been explosive in the running pass game, but it starts with Desmond. And that was a 68-yard touchdown catch for Knowles. I really don't know who the offensive MVP is. Is it yeah. Knowles, is it Vaughn, or Skylar Thompson, who was unbelievable? Well, I am a quarterback, so Skylar Thompson, you get it for me, especially in that first half. 10 of 11, 165. He was efficient. He took care of the ball. He converted on third down. He did everything you want your quarterback to do. Now, we, we know Kansas a little bit outmanned, right? You, you look at the record coming in, they're one and seven. But you talk about piling on a lot of injuries, including their starting quarterback, Jason Bean. I mean, this game, and it was like almost in a two-minute stretch. Stretch. It was the paradigm of exactly what you don't want to happen, where you lose two quarterbacks, you're down to your third quarterback in a game where, like you said, you feel like you're a bit outmatched. And the, and the thing is, they're playing a lot better, right? A lot better than they played against Oklahoma State. They're tackling better, not good enough, right? They're converting on, on third downs better, but not good enough. They have to find a way to continue to do all these things better. Their offensive coordinator, Coach, Coach Cole Nicky, Colonel Nicky said he wants more. He wants his team to exhibit the ability to give more on a lot of different fronts, and that's what they need to do in the second half. So we start the second half with a touchback. Knowles takes a knee, and K-State begins the second 30 minutes with the ball at the 25-yard line. You know, Thompson got banged up, missed some time. And when he came back, I'm not sure that he was 100% healthy a couple of weeks ago yeah, yeah. at Texas Tech. He really seems to have his legs under him now. A, a win today for the Wildcats. They're bowl eligible. And you start to look down the road. They're putting the pieces together. This could be three in a row if they can finish the deal. And this drive big for both teams. And some motion to start this second half. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 50, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. When you get those outside zone calls, the offensive linemen and especially the tackles want to try to get outside. You're going to see him here. He's going to just move a little early trying to get outside the defensive end to create a soft edge, and he gets called for ball start. That'll drive you crazy if you're a coach, right? Yeah. You go through the first half executing so good and you come out start the second half with a penalty first and 15 you give it to deuce vaughn and deuce is loose there he goes across midfield vaughn inside the 30 and he will score touchdown wildcats the answer for first and 15 deuce vaughn 80 yards Deuce Vaughn says, Cooper BB, it's okay. I see your false start, and I raise you an 80-yard explosion. 
Vaughn, 11 touches today, 200 total yards for the sophomore. Take a deep breath, young man. You deserve it. Chris Tennant to try the extra point. Three for three today, make it four for four, just like he was last week in the home win over TCU. I mean, how does it happen? That soft edge was created, obviously, on the previous play. You get the false start, but take a look at that tackle. Get on the outside and hook the defensive end. Once you have the defensive end hooked right here, this play is going, it's going, and as much as Rich Miller is trying to get on his horse, there is no catching that young man if he gets ahead of steam. I'll give a lot of credit to Rich Miller, who was showing a lot of speed to try to run down Vaughn. Yeah. But how about the footwork and the balance to stay in bounds once he got to the edge, cut it back, and there you see the speed. I mean, that's why this running back is different. You see a lot of running backs on that same type of play. Oh, I've got 10, I've got 12. Step out of bounds and move on to the next play. Oh, no, not the young man you see on your screen right there. He tries to take it the distance and does. Well, if you talk to the coaches, uh, K-State, they'll tell you, he's a running back. He yeah. loves to get up in between the tackles. He's just got the ability to bust it if he gets outside, and that's what he did there. After his kickoff, I want to talk about a story we learned of how he was even recruited to play at K-State. Kenny Logan went down to the first half. He has the return here and brings it out to the 20-yard line. Yeah, Deuce Vaughn w was recruited almost by his own dad, too. He talked to the coaching staff. He had a relationship with the running back coach, and he said, hey, he's my son. I'm a, I'm a scout in the NFL. All I'm saying is he could be something. It's something there, right? They take a look. They get him in, and, and, and obviously the rest is history. This young man is about as humble as a young man as, as, as they have found, and everybody loves him, and clearly he does his job well. And you saw it on the graphic, the 80-yard touchdown run, a career long for Vaughn. Kansas comes out throwing in the second half, and short hop to Lassiter incomplete. Jalen Daniels, once again, the signal caller for the Jayhawks. Yeah, it has not been good for Kansas. Uh, punt, field goal, right? We thought we saw a little bit of life, and then they had the missed field goal, which would have put points on the board. And then punt, punt from there. I mean, they, they have to find a way to manufacture points here so they can keep this game within reach, right, within striking distance and give themselves a chance. And when they were down 14-3 and driving, ultimately out of missed field goal, I thought if they get a touchdown yeah. here, this can really help do something for their confidence. Unfortunately, they didn't get in the end zone. A missed field goal. And we stand now at 28-3 and some extracurriculars after Trevor Wilson went down. Boydo comes over to make the tackle for Kansas State. He's at the bottom of the pile. That's a very good job by number 25, Boydo at the point of attack when you have those quick screens thrown out which is what you're going to see a bunch from kansas because of the third quarterback they're going to get to try to get the ball out quickly and take all the decision out of it you're going to have to be strong at the point of attack at the cornerback position to make sure you can shut those plays down by putting hands and and being aggressive on the receivers trying to block you. third down and 11 not where you want to be if you're anybody but in particular the way kansas wants to set up shop offensively Daniels under pressure, dumps it off to Neal, and he'll be well short of the first down in a punting situation for Kansas. Yeah, he's hurried by none other than NUDK Uzama. I mean, he had, they have two people, Kansas does, dedicated to blocking and trying to stop him, and he still splits the double team and puts pressure on the quarterback, so he has to get out and dump the ball down. But good job of him not making a mistake backed up and giving Kansas State the ball in their own territory. Vernon has been busy today. The punter for Kansas. Brooks once again back deep to receive. Nice punt here. Brooks retreating, gathers it inside the 15 and racing to the far side. He's got speed across the 40 and near midfield actually pushed out around the 44-yard line. We'll step aside. Wildcats open the second half with a touchdown, and they've got the ball when we return.
Just over two minutes into the second half in Lawrence, Kansas. K-State leading on the road 28-3. They were on top 21-3 at halftime. An 80-yard run for Deuce Vaughn to begin half number two. Made it 28-3. And a nice effort defensively has the ball in the hands of the Wildcats once again. First and 10, Kansas State at the 43. This is Irvin on the ground. Vaughn getting a break, and Irvin breaks outside, picks up 11 or 12, and another first down. Ball carrier is number 20. You know, when you, you look at them, they really do have a lot of weapons offensively. I mean, you look at the receivers and, and, and certainly the pair of running backs that have done such a nice job today. Yeah, Phillip Brooks Jr., Malik Knowles Jr., Joe Irvin Jr., Deuce Vaughn Jr. That's a, a, a sophomore, sophomore. That's a bunch of young guys that can come back and, and make this offense really a real, real threat. Thompson on first down, going to throw it. Pass complete, and he goes to his tight end. That's Sammy Wheeler, first catch of the day. Junior, <laughs> right? They, they have a bunch of guys that can return and, and make this offense a very, very mature, very mature, explosive offense, and it'll be led by those two sophomore running backs, Deuce Vaughn and Jordan. If you're a high school tight end and you want to play, go to K-State because they put like 35 different guys on the field throughout Excellent. the game. Their rotation with a tight end game is unbelievable. Yep, a new tight end right now. Number 87, Nick Lenners. They'll run the ball on second down and eight. And that was Joe Irvin tackled by Ricky Thomas Jr. And here it is. He's taking this series off, but the deuce has been loose today, no doubt. Absolutely, and I'm kind of disappointed in you because you just haven't gone deuces loose enough, right? Because he's presented the opportunities there, Adam. Sold he's presented the opportunities, and you have not taken advantage. But as you can see, just 11 touches, right? Just 11 touches, 149 rushing yards. That's a career high for him. He has been explosive from the start, and this game has a lot more game left. Here we are eight, nine games in to his sophomore season, and his career average as far as all-purpose yards per game, 126. And this time they go through the air. The pass is complete. Landry Weber, the senior out of Lenexa, Kansas, has the grab. Yeah, they're getting everything they want. They, they, they get Malik Knowles in motion. He's been explosive today, and they just go with a, a curl flat concept with a shallow cross across, and the curl comes wide open because of the threat of Malik Knowles going to the flat immediately. 14 first downs, 382 total yards for the Wildcats, and they likely would have more in the first down category if they didn't have two touchdowns at more than 65 yards apiece. Deuce back in the game. Work a little play action with him here. Wheel route. He's open. And Thompson overshot him. This is incomplete. I like that. Man, once again, his small stature is almost an advantage. It's a play fake. And once you play fake to him, right, all the defense is reeling, right, trying to find their passing uh, depths and different things like that, find the receivers. And he walks right through the line of scrimmage and is wide open down the field. Obviously, Skylar Thompson is going to hit that more times than not. He's going to want that one back. Deuce goes out. Irvin is in at running back. Second down and 10. Irvin gets the carry coming near side. And he gets a couple to the 20. Joe Irvin, the ball carrier. So Vaughn comes back in on third and eight. The question is, where will we line up, right? We talked to the Kansas defensive staff, and they said it, we, we have to find out where he is. He's not always lined up at that traditional running back position as he is here. He's going to be lined up right next to the quarterback, but sometimes he's lined up in the slot. But there he is there. Keep an eye on see how they find a way to use him to get the first down. Garber, the motion man. They're going to throw it on third and eight. Why not? Deuce Vaughn is open. The catch, the run, first down, close to the 10-yard line. 
I mean, this is very good by Vaughn because he's in pass protection, right? But he decides right away that they are only rushing four. We have five blockers. I don't need to stay in. I can get into the pass route. And when you're only rushing four, you're dropping a bunch of guys for Kansas. And the running back is going to be an option. He gets the ball and gets the first down. Even though Rich Miller has had himself quite a day chasing this guy around, he's just not there fast enough. Vaughn picks up another first down. Another 10 yards for 22. Four catches on the day, 61 yards overall. So the motion man here is Wheeler. They fake to Irvin, go to the end zone, and off to fingertips and incomplete. And that was Wheeler they were trying to find in the back of the end zone, the tight end. It's a well-designed play where you get the fake run outside zone, which, which you've done already, and get the tight end right over the middle. And that's where you want that ball. Maybe just a little hot, right? But you want to get that ball high so he can get up and use his large frame to go get it. Yeah, K-State's had some big scoring plays today. But you know what? They're outstanding in the red zone. Very efficient when they get there. Second and goal. Ball right at the 10. Knowles in motion. Thompson rolling right. He's got Vaughn, who's tripped up at the six-yard line. I mentioned the red zone numbers coming in two today for the Wildcats. And you see where they rank. Really, really impressive. When they get inside the 20, they're putting points on the board. 93%. 93, almost 94% of the time they're scoring touchdowns. And I, I would expect that this time will be no different. Or score, scoring in general. Yeah, and that goes back to 2019. 74 touchdowns in 111 trips. That's a that's a big number. Yeah. Play clock down inside of five. And a whistle, and we'll see what we have here. And it's going to be a Wildcat timeout. Timeout. Kansas State, first the half. 30 seconds. We'll stay here with 7.45 to play in the third quarter, and K-State looking to add to their 28-3 advantage tomorrow. Catch a special Fox NFL Sunday pregame show live from Annapolis at 11 a.m. Eastern. Then it forwards one of the biggest games of the year as the Packers take on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. It all kicks off tomorrow on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Thought Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones is going to be big in that game. He's one of the more talented runners in the NFL. I really love watching him run the ball. He's, he's got some similar traits to, you know, the two young men we're watching today and Deuce Vaughn and Joe Irvin. Not as small, but not a big guy by any stretch of the imagination, but deceivingly strong and able to catch the ball in the backfield and do all the things that we've seen these two young men do today, especially Deuce Vaughn. Packers on a roll after losing their opener. Chiefs have struggled. We talked about it earlier. See it all tomorrow on Fox. Coverage starts 11 a.m. Eastern time. Third and goal for Kansas State here. Thompson in trouble. Rolling right and into the end zone. Tipped it incomplete. And he was trying to find Keenan Garber. And good coverage on the play there as Nate Betts came over to break it up from his linebacking position. You know, what Kansas State tried to do is run the shallow cross concept and kind of a mess with both receivers because you usually get man in this part of the, 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 the field, but they don't get man in the Kansas play zone, and he tries to buy time, and he finds a receiver, but great defensive play by number zero in red. Yeah, Betts got him there. So here's the field goal try. Chris Tennant, one for one last week, made a 42-yarder against TCU. This one up. It hits the upright. No good. Adam, how often does it happen? We create a whole graphic about how good they are in the red zone, and then he doinks it off the upright. Kansas will get another opportunity when we come back. K-State leading Kansas 28-3 our score halfway through the third quarter. And the Wildcats missed an opportunity to add to their lead. This is Chris Tennant, the freshman kicker who came in last week and had his first opportunity. He was perfect at home against TCU, but misses the chip shot here. Now, he did admit his field goal last week, the first of his career, and the youngest freshman uh, to hit one for K-State. He, he did admit I didn't feel a lot of pressure based on the stage of the game and the score and, and all of that last week and unfortunately able to keep his record perfect. It's a 
good opening run by Devin Neal. Gets, get a few yards, create another first down opportunity. That's exactly what Jalen Daniels needs, right? Not a whole bunch of reps. Has had some, right? Has some starts last year. But this year, he hasn't contributed a bunch. And it, it's good for them to have the running game for him to lean on as he continues to try to get comfortable in this game. Daniels looking to pass on second down. He's got Lassiter open across midfield. That looked good. Oh, yeah, without question. It's a, it's a very good job because they fake the naked, right? They go waggle pass, fake the naked, stop. The over is faked, and he runs back out of bounds. Very good job. Very good job by the play caller, right? Creating an opportunity for an easy completion for Jalen Daniels. Nice throw. Good for 12 yards and a first down. Now run the ball again with Neal. Goes down close to the 45-yard line. Daniel Green again makes a tackle. He, 22, fun to watch defensively for K-State. Yeah, he's a tackling machine for sure. He gets the ball quickly and violently. Five yards. For Neal, second down and five as we go under six minutes to play third quarter. <laughs> Daniels again. And one more time, he is complete. And again, it's Kwame Lassiter who has the catch. Russ Yeast there in the coverage, the transfer from Louisville. I mean, that's a great job. I mean, getting him on the edge, putting him in a position to be comfortable. He's going to get the naked bootleg, right? A play ago, they, a couple plays ago, they faked the naked, and now you get a, a, a corner route. Nice thrown ball. Perfectly on the outside, giving your team a chance. And it looks like Jalen Daniels is getting comfortable. Got to get the ball in the end zone on this drive. Yeah, without question. They run it with Neal. Makes a man miss. Picks up a couple after nearly going down in the backfield. It's T.J. Smith, redshirt freshman from Atlanta. Came into the day 26 tackles. He got it done there. inside the 15 and down close to the 13 yard line they've gotten themselves in, in quite a groove and, but like you said they need to pay this drive off with a touchdown any way anyhow you have to find a way to get it get it in the end zone and it starts with this third and two problem for kansas they like to play slow so so when you're down like they are yeah. Even if you get a score and get some rhythm, they're not used to playing fast. We'll see if they can score here and pick up the pace. Neal again on third and two, and he lost a little bit. So it'll set up fourth down. I would have loved them to see them be a little more creative, right? You know on a third and short that Kansas State is going to pin their ears back and try to stop the run. Find a way to get your quarterback, Jalen Daniels, who's shown that he can throw the ball on the move. He can throw the ball with, from within the pocket. Get him on the move and allow him to make a play with his arm and his legs. But now you have a little bit longer fourth and four because of the loss. Cody Fletcher made the stop on third down. Sets up fourth down and four. And you, di and you DK Uzama inside. A half a sack away from the school record. They pick it up. Pass is caught. That's Lassiter who breaks a tackle and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas. That's a very, very, very nice drive by Kansas and a very good job on that play by Lassiter who was given an option to, he's coming here and he's just going to sit and then sit down right there and ready to catch the ball and then the strength to pull away and drag defenders in the end zone. Very good job. When you have that type of route, it's a read. Are you going to turn out? Are you going to break in? Are you going to turn in? He turns in wide open and Jalen Daniels loves it. He's got an opportunity and that's what football is all about. You get your opportunity, you perform well, and you see how the chips fall. Jacob Borchilla 
Extra point is good. 15 yards. Jalen Daniels to Kwame Lassiter. The Jayhawks have their first touchdown of the day, and they trail K-State 28-10. to FS1 College football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. With Devin Gardner, I'm Adam Alexander, live in Lawrence, Kansas, where the Jayhawks have put together their first touchdown drive of the day, 80 yards, and the payoff, Lassiter scoring from 15 yards off the throw from Daniels. And so far, they're... Off to a decent start here in the second half when you look at the Jayhawks compared to what they did in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, Jalen Daniels has been a spark. Right? He came in late in the th in the second quarter, but in the second half, he, he's been a spark. He's been efficient, and he's just done what the coaches have asked him to do, and, and it's, bold well, it's, it's, been well, it's gone well. And Norris lets this one get into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and the Wildcats will have it at the 25-yard line when we return on FS1. When you turn the calendar to November, you start looking more and more at the conference standings right now. Oklahoma on top in the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, K-State, obviously, they cannot control their own destiny. But if they can get a little bit of help from some guys in some higher spots, they will get it. They may get a chance to compete for a Big 12 championship. But uh, like, like I said, they don't they don't control their own destiny. But there are games to be played, right? You have that. This is why you play the game. On the road today, next weekend at home against West Virginia, a game you can see on FS1. Then they get 12th-ranked Baylor in a couple of weeks' time before wrapping things up on the road against the Longhorns of Texas Thanksgiving weekend. So K-State trying to answer a Kansas score of the touchdown variety for the first time today. 28-10, three minutes to play third quarter. Quick pass near side, and this one going to be complete to Garcia, who's got his first catch of the day. They are going deep into the depth chart when you talk about the, the receiving for K-State. They've hit tight ends, wide receivers, seeing some faces that we don't always see getting an opportunity to make some plays. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's what you want to do. You want to get guys chances because next year and, and moving on throughout the season, you never know who you're going to need, and young guys getting these invaluable opportunities to contribute to a win or a game in general, right? Kansas on the other side is saying, hold on, wait a minute. We're going to continue to play hard and give ourselves a chance here, and they stop them there. Rich Miller on the tackle who's been in the face of Deuce Vaughn or at least tried trying to be in the face of Deuce Vaughn all day. Sets up a third down. This is going to be really, really big for this Kansas defense because they, they have not had a big momentum play really today. If, if you get a stop here, get the ball back, then all of a sudden the buzz of this game changes just a little bit coming off that Kansas touchdown if you can force a three and out. Yeah, without a question. One of the motion man. They're going to throw it on third and four. Thompson has time. Complete and stop. Warner with a great effort to get the first down. I thought for sure he was going to be stopped short of the line to gain, but the second and third effort, and he'll have enough to move the chains. He should have been stopped short. Very good job by Kansas keeping everything in front. And if you come up and you tackle, you get off the field and you give your offense a chance. But three to four missed tackles on one guy. And how about the senior finding a way to get a first down? And Deuce Vaughn loves it. Cade Warner, the son of NFL Hall of Famer Kurt Warner. Absolutely. And we've been seeing him a lot more lately. I mean, transferred from Nebraska, really starting to get a feel for the system and playing a bigger and bigger role as we go down the stretch of the regular season. Dad would have been proud with that pickup. Thompson going deep, and it's too tall here, trying to get Keenan Garber, the sophomore from here in Lawrence. Romello Dotson deep in coverage. He had him. He had him. Just a bit in front. I haven't gotten a chance to call Garber's name much today. He's a talented football player in his own right, only a sophomore. K-State led 21 to 3 at halftime. Each team has gotten on the board with a touchdown here in the third quarter. 
And the Wildcats try to drive again. And they give it to Deuce Vaughn. He's got another first down. <laughs> When in doubt, get it to Vaughn. And that's what they do here. I mean, once again, soft edge. Very good job by this Kansas State offensive line finding a way to get the defensive ends and outside linebackers hooked so that their running back can get on the outside. As you can see right there, they have their, their butts in the hole, and it allows for Deuce Vaughn to get around and get vertical quickly. A year ago as a freshman, he had 152 yards total against Kansas. Today, Vaughn is really lighting up the board both on the ground and in the air. And he gets a break. This is Irvin, who carries the ball for the eighth time today and gets a couple. He's had a nice afternoon as well. That'll end the third quarter. K-State on top, 28 to 10. They got a drive going now to perhaps put it away. What an afternoon for Deuce Vaughn, the sophomore. Just about ready to roll in the fourth quarter. K-State leading Kansas 28 to 10. And there's a look at Deuce Vaughn, who's put up 217 yards today, over 160 on the ground, 56 in the receiving, and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, we talked about, we raved about how he played last year as a freshman in this game, and he's obliterated all those numbers already. Second out of nine, Thompson moving out of the shotgun, and he dumps it to Vaughn over the middle. He, he and Rich, Rich Miller have really gotten to know each other. There he is again, making a tackle. I mean, he, he's been in a position, when he's been in a position to make the tackle, he's made the tackle, and that's a lot to ask against such a talented player. Uh, and now we kind of see what Coach was talking about. If we had a bunch of Rich Millers running around, we would be just fine. He's had himself quite a day. He just about ran down Vaughn yeah. when he broke yeah. it for 80 yards. Yeah, and he, he outweighs him almost by 50 pounds. Yeah, Rich Miller, one of those players we talked about earlier, transferred from Buffalo to be a part of this Jayhawk program with head coach Lance Leipold. Big third down play here. Thompson throws after thinking about running the football, and it's complete. And again, it's Cade Warner. He's becoming a third down killer. Second consecutive time on third and medium. He's been able to pick up the first. Yeah, so somewhere Super Bowl champion Kurt Warner is smiling. That's my boy. <laughs> that's my boy. You convert on third down. Quarterbacks know that that's the most important down. And when your father's a quarterback who's made his living converting on third down, you know, get open let the quarterback find you very good job by warner finding the vacancy in the kansas defense so much talk about Knowles and brooks and rightfully so when you look at the receivers for k-state but some other guys starting to step up and make plays we've seen it here today quick dump off to irvin who's got room down the left sideline and takes it inside the 20 and once again the wildcats are in the red zone with just over 13 minutes to play Thompson now 19 of 24, closing on 250 and had the long touchdown pass to Knowles. And that was first catch of the day for Irvin. Picked up 12 yards. He's also carried it eight times for 59. Not much happening here. Nice defense by Kansas. Yeah, Joe Irvin doesn't get a whole bunch there, but he is a real luxury for Kansas State, and most importantly, Deuce Vaughn, right? Because now you can take Deuce Vaughn off the field and get a lot of the same traits and production from Irvin. He can catch the ball off the backfield. He can run the ball in between the tackles, and obviously he can get outside with great speed. It's a very good job by Kansas State recruiting two guys that are very similar in stature, similar in style, so when you take one out, you don't miss a beat. Thompson doing a great job with the lead of working the play clock each and every time. He's going to throw it here on second and nine. Nearly wrestled down, rolls out, keeps the play alive, and will get hit out of bounds. And there's Potter getting the penalty. 
Irvin comes over, some pushing and shoving, and this is the second consecutive week that Skylar Thompson has gotten hit out of bounds. 19. And a little bit of a skirmish is broken out following. Man, that was so low. You just don't you don't you don't want to see that. We've seen guys injured in this game with clean Personal hits, foul. but you don't want to see that about number 19 Defense half the distance of the goal automatic first down. I mean, he's almost two yards out of bounds and almost two steps and, and he hits him You know a guy that's already experienced injury this year And you can see his entire team coming to his rescue because they're sick of it, right? Like you said, this is the second week that he's been hit out of bounds, and, and this is this is not that's not good. It's not good. Well, Urban came over, and uh, he he let Potter know that they did not appreciate the hit out of bounds. Yeah, and, that's and, what you and, expect too. Yeah, you know, now, now now you start to wonder, right? Like with 11:50 to play, you know, how do you manage your personnel with a 28-10 advantage? But Thompson is heading back out there. I mean, and, it, and the thing is, you shouldn't. You shouldn't even have to think about that. The game should stay clean and play the game in between the lines and in between the whistles. Uh, Pot Potter, obviously, out of the game after a play like that because Coach Leipold doesn't want that either. And, and a good portion of that frustration, right? And yeah. you, you understand it. Now 28-10, 1-7 on the year. I've had some opportunities that are squandered away. Yeah. Skylar Thompson's like, hey, don't take it out on me. <laughs> Leave me out of it. Well, you, and you, you hate to see this if you're a K-State fan because yeah. you know, he missed time earlier this year with an injury. And, and since he's been back, they've, they've gotten it rolling, looking for their third consecutive win. Great to start the year when he was healthy. So the last thing you want to see is him out of the lineup because he's meant so much to the program. Mr. Do-Everything, Deuce Vaughn right there. Noel's in motion. They hand it to him. And he's going to be just shy of the end zone. Rich Miller once again hanging on. They talked about Deuce Vaughn and his ability to almost do everything. Look at him on this play. He's right here. Look at him get out in front of this jet sweep and just like a missile, like he has the ball, just sprinting and trying to get this guy ejected out. Of, I mean, that's this is a guy who's had over 200 yards of total offense, sacrificing himself in a 28-10 game to give everything so that his buddy can try to get in the end zone. Second and goal. And then he pays it off. And he flips into the end zone. Touchdown, Deuce Vaughn. He's got the hat trick, his third of the day. Mr. Do Everything. And I would say hold his helmet on the sideline. He should be done for the afternoon. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, he's done quite a bit in this game, and here goes the patience and in-between tackles, the thing that the coaches raved about. We don't have to take our small back out and put someone else in when we're on the goal line. We have a complete confidence that he'll be able to find his way and get in the end zone, and he does it there for the second time on the day in that type of situation. But, yeah, I mean... He's been extremely impressive, and I've, I've loved watching him. He's been as advertised. Chris Tennant adds the extra point. And it's all Wildcats. They're leading this one 35 to 10. Take a little trip. Be another side of the same ship. This is the church. Incredible afternoon for the sophomore Deuce Vaughn. He's helped K-State to a 35-10 advantage over rival Kansas. Across the board, establishing a lot of career highs. Yeah, I mean, he's doing it in every aspect, just like we thought he would, but having his best day of his career here late in the season. And, and what better game to do it in than to do it in the Sunflower Showdown and kind of cement yourself in this rivalry's history forever. So Kansas gets the ball back, trailing 35-10 with 10.46 to play. A touchback puts the ball at the 25-yard line. This Veterans Day, Fox Sports proudly salutes and supports our nation's military heroes and the organizations that serve them. Purple Heart Homes is a nationwide nonprofit providing housing solutions for service-connected, disabled, and aging veterans. For more information, visit purplehearthomesusa.org. Special thanks as we head toward Veterans Day to all those that have served our great country. Uh, 
Daniels in at quarterback, hands the ball to Neal, who's got running room out across the 35 and picks up a first down. I know we're talking so much about Deuce Vaughn, and, and rightfully so, but as a true freshman, Devin Neal, uh, on a team that, that doesn't have all the parts and pieces you would like, but has been a very positive influence uh, for Kansas as a first-year player. Yeah, I mean, he's their best offensive player, without a doubt. I mean, he's been he's been exceptional with what he's had to work with and, and done well and really matured in the season. Touchdown pass on the last drive. Completion here for Daniels. And this one goes out to Lawrence Arnold. First down, Kansas. Wayne Jones comes over to make the tackle for Kansas State. First down, Kansas. Clock rolling inside of 10 minutes to play. Lasseter here. Keeps down close to the 45-yard line. Now, Adam, I don't know. I really like the way Jalen Daniels is taking advantage of this opportunity, right? Uh, he di didn't expect it. Probably came in this game, didn't expect to play, but he's been called upon, and he's been sharp. Well, you, you got to make the most of your opportunity, and here's something we've not seen today. Daniels running. Looked like he, he wanted to slide, didn't commit to it, and that scared me a little bit. Thought he might have an injury but they're going to pick up the pace here trailing yeah he drops back sees nobody open downfield and takes off that's something he can do and he th i think he might have gotten a guy on the on the field too right a little aaron Rodgers there where he gets a guy running off the field and snaps the ball quick how about the, the ability to throw the ball run the ball and then showing the poise as a quarterback hey we got a free play here let's try to get this ball snapped to get a free five yards well we, we said he's he's got some time I mean, this isn't a, a totally new yeah. situation to him but, but still very young, right? Still yeah. a young guy with not a whole bunch of reps. And, and you know he's not getting the reps in practice either, right? Exactly. Being the third guy exactly. on the depth chart. Offside, number 97. Defense, five-yard penalty. Second down. This is a little more than just lining up in the neutral zone here. Yeah, I mean, this is about as offsides as you can, as you can get right here. Trying to get off the field, that big fellow. Look at it. Look at the strides. <laughs> ah, too late. <laughs> Ball snap. A great hustle by Nate Matlack. And look at this. I mean, he he is absolutely everywhere. Daniel Green comes crashing through. I mean, uh, an absolute missile. Yeah, McPherson there to clean it up. Wow. He's gonna come right out of the corner of your screen there. Boom. Good job by Neil to try to stay up, but wow. He is out to prove that he's Deuce. He's the real Deuce. You know, the coaches told us last couple of years he, he wasn't the starter, so kind of a quiet guy. Now that he's starting every game, his attitude has really changed. Yeah, absolutely. More outspoken, more of that taking on that leadership role. And, and the thing is, he's not, he's not the loud guy now all of a sudden, but he's speaking more, and, and he ha he's more of a lead-by-example guy. You can see he brings an intensity to this defense that can't be replaced. It's a nice catch by Arnold, and a flag is down, and we'll see Personal what the call foul. is. Roughing the passer, number four, defense. 15-yard, added to the end of the run, automatic, first down. That's Wayne Jones, number four. Yeah, that ball's completely out. Completely out, you just hit it, you just can't do it, right? You just can't hit him in the chest. And he's defenseless right he's he just throwing the ball he can't defend himself gotta stay away from that and now they're gonna review it and I, I assume this is gonna be for targeting they didn't, but they didn't, they didn't say that, and it didn't look, well, I guess it was kind of up around the head. We'll come back in a moment. So to confirm, the review was not 
about targeting, even though there was a personal foul on Wayne Jones, the review was on if, in fact, Arnold made the catch. He did. Call stands, and we move on with business. Yeah, very good job by Arnold Jones getting the ball and trapping his hands underneath so that the ball doesn't hit the ground on that diving catch, but they get a little extra yards because of the penalty. Throwing toward the end zone and knocked That's away nicely. Really good, good defense there by Boydo as he was defending Lassiter. Lassiter tried to get his second touchdown catch of the day. This is something that Jalen Daniels is going to learn. When you get that ball up and high and outside, it gives your receiver a chance to see it first. But when you have it come in at that low trajectory, like you saw right there, to hit the DB in the back or the de defender and the receiver see it at the exact same time, which now it's 50-50. You want to try to get that ball up and high so that your receiver can track it before the defender can find it. Good job by Buda Bordeaux. Second and ten. Daniels completes. Blaster's a good player. Yeah, he's a good player for sure. Hasn't been able to, you know, hit his stride the way he might have thought he would come coming into this year as a fifth-year senior, but he is a talented player for sure. Third and six, Jayhawks. Ball tipped, and this one's going to be incomplete. Reggie Stubblefield. Yeah, it's interesting. Stubblefield, I thought it was more of a safety defensive back tight. They list him at, at linebacker, but he's kind of a, a hybrid nickel. I mean, he's a really impressive athlete. I mean, this is a good play by him, getting up and getting his ball batted down, but I love the decision by Jalen Daniels. He sees two stacked safeties over each other. He sees the pressure coming, and he tries to replace him with the throw. Now, the next step he'll take in his maturation is find a way to navigate that throw and get it to your open receiver because he has an open receiver behind him, but a better play made by the defender. Trailing 35-10, Kansas goes on fourth and six. Quick pass to Neal. He stretches for the marker, and I believe they'll rule he was out of bounds and short of the line to gain. It will turn over on downs to the Wildcats. Yeah, I mean, that's something else that you know, Jalen Downs will learn as he continues to get reps in play. He, he thought they'd be able to get that ball to his running back and, and let him run and get it, but he wasn't able to. They turn it over on downs. Kansas State will roll back out there. K-State going to make it 13 in a row in the Sunflower Showdown, leading Kansas 35-10 with seven minutes to play. And they get the ball back after Kansas turned it over on downs. And a change at quarterback. Will Howard is in for Skylar Thompson. Good day for Thompson, closing the book, 19 of 24. 245 and a touchdown, and Howard comes out throwing. Flag on the play, and this one is complete. Not enough guys on the line of scrimmage, I think, is going to be. Illegal formation. More than four in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. You got to have guys lined up on the line of scrimmage on the outside. That's what's tough when you when you bring in all these subs, guys that aren't probably used to playing yeah. together and so on. Yeah, I think Jalen Travis, number three, was the culprit. He's a freshman. He made the catch. He made, right. made the catch, catch to Jalen. But... He probably knew he was getting it. He's like, hurry up and line up, but you got to make sure you check with the ref and tell him you're going to be on the ball. First and 15, they'll go on the ground this time. Whoa. I'm not sure that... I'm not sure he was down. Yeah, he got flipped over the defender. And a nice carry here by oh Jacardier Wright. Maybe the elbow might have gone down uh -oh, with the ball the ball hand. That was a that was an odd play. Let's see what happened there. All right, he gets chopped down. Right, hand down. Oh, there the elbow. I knew yep. it. The elbow goes down. But that, that's a pretty athletic play. That's nice. Right, a sophomore had a big day a couple of years ago nice job against Iowa three. State. And he got some time last week when Irvin was out. Quick pass to the outside. And a nice catch by Tyrone Howe. Big East College basketball returns, and for the first time ever, we bring you seven live opening season games from the studio. Get ready to watch hoops like never before as we bounce around from game to game. The Big East opening night tip-off show. Catch it live Tuesday, 6.30 Eastern on FS1. 
And we're doing the Sunflower Showdown on the gridiron in hoops. It's been all Jayhawks. They lead the series 70 to 8. Nice run here by the backup quarterback, Will Howard. Big, strong sophomore quarterback. Out of Downingtown, PA. Hey, it's good for him to get this time. I mean, you and I have talked about all the skill guys and, and, and the youth movement, if you will, at, at K-State and how bright the future is with the catalyst obviously being Deuce Vaughn as a sophomore. So now you get in Will Howard, the young quarterback. and Yeah, without question. And they really like him. 6'4", 20, 35 pounds, can throw it. And obviously you can see he can run it as well. Played in seven games. Here's Garcia with a penalty flag down against Nevada earlier this year. Howard, 7 of 10, 123. And a touchdown. Personal foul. 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 Illegal low block. block. Number 34. Four. Four. Offense. Offense. 15, 15 yards, yards from the spot of the foul. Still suck it down. out here to kind of try to remove that and protect defenders right they do a lot of protecting of the offense but they want to create rules that will protect defenders and they've kind of removed the chop blocks outside of the box and you see there the big fullback Ben Sennett gets him low hey it's all it's all good he had a touchdown today yeah he's feeling fine he's like I don't care about that penalty I scored a touchdown my first touchdown yeah I remember my first touchdown Howard complete this is Garber on the reception. Tender age of 18, 2010. Right corner. On the receiving end. No. Oh, you, oh, you, you, okay. I ran it in. Okay. I actually threw one as well. Jeremy Gallon, bubble screen. But That's they, nice. they credit me for a passing touchdown as well. Bowling Green, 2010. It was awesome. That'll be the last time I scored touchdowns in that year. The good old days. How many? Because you you played both quarterback receiver. How many receiving touchdowns? You, you ever get the end? I played yeah, one four. year, one half year receiver. It was just a half year. Four touchdowns. Led the team at the time. Then got called back to quarterback in duties. Howard in trouble. Going to run, and he is free. Uh -huh. Look at Howard go sliding down at midfield. Well, how about him using his quarter, doing his quarterback duties? Very good job. And there is a flag, and you see the frustration. Yeah, he can, he can run it. That was, that was a nice, nice pocket presence, everything moving about. Holding, number 71. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Still third down. Got Logan Long, converted tied in, moved over to tackle last year. And, and that's when it usually comes, is when you, you're – Holding your guy and then he tries to run away because the quarterback is moving which are, which whichever way he's going this time right up the middle and you have your guy controlled and then he tries to dart away and to be completely honest I'd love to see a lot more effort by the defender if that's gonna get called right he doesn't even try to run but then and long is just sitting there holding on to him you know what I mean obviously it's a hold but it, you can call holding on every single play third and six play clock was rolling down and Quite honestly, I thought they might reset the play clock. They did not. So the Wildcats call a timeout. They're second of the half. Kansas State. With the timeout, we'll step aside. Chris Kleiman and crew on top big. FS1 College Football, sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. K-State making a nice investment on their future. 35-10, they lead Kansas. The victory today makes them bowl eligible for the second time in the Chris Kleiman era. And the backup quarterback is in. Will Howard doing a nice job. Here he is, third and 16. And this one going to be incomplete. Garcia couldn't hang on. I Man, that's incomplete, and, and you know, K State's going to have to come on and punt. But I can just tell you that Coach Kleiman is excited of what he's seen from, from, from Howard. The, the previous play, there's a holding penalty that was relatively iffy, but you see your quarterback moving about the pocket, protecting the ball, and then find the way of running it a first down. And then he's backed up because of the holding call. He drops back, stays in the pocket, knows there's not much of a rush, stands strong, and delivers a strike that's incomplete because of a drop. So I think that Coach Kleiman's going to be happy. Lasseter on the return. 
And he's got it down inside the 40-yard line. It'll go out of bounds at the 35. Well, we knew it would be tough for Kansas. They come in at one and seven, and those issues compounded early when they lost not one, but two quarterbacks due to injury. Yeah, I mean, they lost the two quarters, and then they lost their gadget guy, right? One of the top uh, players in, in Lachlan, their, their do-it-all running back. I mean, it's, it's been bad fortunes, but when we talked to Coach Col Colt Nicky, the, the offensive coordinator for Kansas, he, he gave the analogy of, of a kid learning to ride a bike, right, and being a parent. And he, and he looks at himself as a parent and, and team as the kids trying to ride. And, you know, you always hit that stride sometimes, right, where you're riding, you're riding, you're riding, and then you fall down, right? And, and, that, and that's the point where the parent has to help you get back on the bike and ride. And that's what he loved that he's seen from his team and wants to see them getting back on the bike and riding. And it looks like they are not quitting, right? They're still fighting, still playing, and giving a little more just like he wants. Pessa kicks in into the ballgame, has a carry on first down. Completion on second down to Mason Fairchild, the tight end. Junior out of Andale, Kansas. And Kansas has to be excited what they've seen from Jalen Daniels, a guy who had opportunities uh, before this staff got there and, and, you know, hadn't had it as much since they've been there. But he has been exemplary in finding the open receiver and doing what the coaches ask. I mean, it hasn't been more, no more, no less. He's done exactly what they've asked and it's been working for him thus far. Haven't used the tight ends much today. Back-to-back -to -back completions to Fairchild. Even there, Jalen Daniels feels pressure from the front side and just drifts, 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 creates space to try to get that ball out. Now, like other things we've talked about, he has to take the next step to try to try to make sure he gets that completion. But that's a good job of having awareness and knowing what's happening around you and finding a way to get to throws some things that, you know, there are other quarterbacks that have played just haven't been able to do. He's doing a good job of it. On second and ten, Daniels to the end zone. Trying to get McBride, and there will be a penalty. Talked about it. On the deep ball, when it's high, you can create pass interference, and you give your wide receivers a chance. And, and whether this is pass interference or not, because the ball is high, the receiver sees it first, and it's absolutely pass interference, right? The DBs are playing DB no for foul. a reason. Pass interference, third down. They wave it off. I, that's insane. I don't, I don't see how that's an option. He runs and puts his hands in his throat as the ball is in the air. That's 110% pass interference if I've ever seen it. I've never seen a more pass interference type call in my life, except for the Saints a few years ago. <laughs> that was clearly pass interference, and they apologized for that. But, uh, yeah, that's... That's a good job by Jalen uh, Daniels on the double move, pump fake, get the ball up high so your wide receiver can see it first. The DB doesn't see it. He plays the receiver, gets his hand on him early. The referees wave the flag. There's T. Denson in coverage. Brings up third down and 10 after they take away the penalty. And, boy, that was a nice catch. Pesek Hickson hangs on despite getting popped. Yeah, we just talked with Mike, Mike Pereira, and he agrees. That's 100% pass interference. Now a timeout, Kansas. Just over a minute to play. Fourth and nine in their last chance to put a score on the board. Adam, do you, do you also, I mean, Jalen Daniels has played well. I mean, he's it, obviously he's not enough, and he came in late, and it was already, the snowball was already kind of rolling. But this is the game summary of how it's gone for you know Kansas, and just hasn't gone well. But they have improved. You know, when you look at it, with the way they played a week ago was not what they wanted. Not from the coaches' staff, not from the players' standpoint. And like like I talked about, Coach Kodal Nicky wanted this team to get back on the bike and they got back on the bike and it's been a lot because of Jalen Daniels and what he's been able to do and 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 even Jason Bean he played well before he had to get out of the game wasn't able to convert a bunch but he did play well and he showed some improvement took a hard hit from Deuce Green of Kansas State number 22 on defense but 
Th this team is young and they are improving and Jalen Daniels continues to try to make an effort to move the ball down the field and get in the end zone, but they're going to be off the field and that'll probably be their last outing on the day. Couldn't get it to Fairchild, so they turn it over on downs and, you know, I go back to something that Coach Leipold told us. I mean, they were back in a corner coming from Buffalo, oh, right? Yeah. Got here late. so late. Yeah. And, and he said, we, they, they see the big picture. They want to use November as a stepping stone. Make it its, a, its own season. Not, not today. They don't get the 1-0 start they were looking for. But I, I think to your point, they put a few things together that give them some momentum to go in uh, to the next week. And that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of times it's coach speak. One week at a time. One week at, it's truly one week at a time. When you come in this game 1-7 and seven, and you haven't really performed well, like you said, you have to win each week. And they feel like they it didn't win this week per se, but they found some things that they can do well and maybe found a new opportunity at quarterback with Jalen Daniels. Here's what's tough. Next week, they go on the road to Texas, then a date at TCU. So back-to-back -back road games for Kansas as they try to get their first conference win. Be 0-6 after today, and, and there you see it. Yeah, I mean, but the, like you said, Coach Lightfoot, they got here so late. They didn't get a chance to see any of their quarterbacks throw until the first day of camp. When you think about it like that, where you don't get the spring ball and, and, the, and the opportunities that all the rest of the college football programs have because of the late hire, to mold your team and kind of try to create the identity that you want them to have, it makes it increasingly dis difficult to be successful. Now they've gotten a full season to try to get what they want into the building as far as mentality. They have a talented running back in Devin Neal. And, and I think it could be on the up and up for Kansas. But today, Kansas State. A couple of late carries for Jordan Schiffers ends it. Kansas State gets the victory. Their 13th in a row in the series over their rival Kansas. And Coach Kleiman meeting Coach Leipold at midfield. And for K-State, we talk about the disappointment for Kansas. K-State gets their third win in a row, and they're going home to get West Virginia next week. More post-game coverage from Lawrence, Kansas, where the Wildcats have won it 35-10.